everybody, what's going on? This is Paul coming to you from Jacksonville with ProPhysique.com and I wanted to just talk about um, my thoughts on bodybuilding and powerlifting and how the two sports are not necessarily mutually exclusive of each other. Um, I almost am starting to believe that the natural progression of bodybuilding is to become not so much a powerlifter, but to get into the powerlifting methodology of training in that heavy weight, higher volume, um, higher intensity training, um, more frequent is what is going to help an athlete progress. And what makes me think that is just the uh, transition I've seen over the years. Because I remember when I first started getting into bodybuilding um, competitively, uh, Lane Norton was kind of my reference for things and he started I don't know if he started but he, he was um, he was a you know a big big uh, squatter and deadlifter and then he started competing in powerlifting lo and behold six or seven years later now everyone is doing it um, and, and to my knowledge Lane was not necessarily the first person to do it certainly um, powerlifting um, has roots that tie into bodybuilding um, as in the competitions it used to contain both you know Arnold and Franco you know, kind of the contemporaries in my mind for um, the fathers of bodybuilding competitively were both very good powerlifters. So, I don't necessarily think the two are um, are uh, exclusive of each other. And in fact, you know, the more that I'm enjoying powerlifting and um, seeing the benefits of it, the more I think that bodybuilders should have an awareness and their training should be rooted in some of the same principles. Um, we all know that quarter squats and half reps on bench and these kind of things are great for the ego, but are they great for the physique? Um, I, I think using the powerlifting methodology for training, A, it's much safer. Um, you know, powerlifters have found out the way to use your leverage to, to move a heavier load in a safer manner. And then also, if you look at the best powerlifters, they're also the biggest, most muscular guys. So. There is a correlation between um, muscle size and strength. Um, so I have thrived since I've started the powerlifting. Um, I've just kept enjoying the sport. With bodybuilding, you know, going in the gym and doing your typical bro workouts, you know, an arm workout, a chest workout, a back workout, um, that was really fun for me for, for years. But I did grow tired of it and it did grow stale. Whereas now with the powerlifting, I've been doing that for years. Um, and it has not grown, gotten stale. There's always, um, there is always another carrot. There's always something else to shoot for. So, um, I don't want anyone to think that the reason I'm doing all this powerlifting is because I have aspirations of being the world's greatest powerlifter. Um, you know, some some of my some of my peers have an amazing talent for the sport, including Lane Norton. Um, you know, and, and even guys like. Uh, you know, people that are not necessarily seasoned powerlifters like Tommy Jeffers. I mean, the guy is just an animal in the gym. Um, squatting, deadlifting, benching, everything is strong. You know, one of my friends that uh, i just been spending time with in Orlando, Josh Hyaduck, he has become a competitive powerlifter in the last year. Um, highly influenced by Lane um, and his success. And who knows, that guy might even be threatening some uh, 181 world records the next time he does a powerlifting meet. So... There is definitely, a, and, and both of the people that I mentioned, you know, Tommy and Josh, if you would see them in person, you would consider them overly muscular. Like, they are very muscular in person. Um, I consider myself not that muscular. So, and they're also much better power lifters. So, um, do the two sports have to be uh, kept separate? I don't think so. I think, um, I think bodybuilding and powerlifting both have roots in each other. Um, you're dealing with people who are interested in uh, being the best they can be at their given at their given sport, um, bodybuilders primarily are more interested in adding uh, muscle in a symmetrical way. Powerlifters are more interested in performance, but there's no reason why you can't balance those two. If you want to be a competitive bodybuilder who powerlifts, or if you want to be a powerlifter who um, has an aspiration of competing in bodybuilding someday. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm gonna go put some of my training videos on here. And let's just uh, let's just go through. I had a really rough week, um, rough in the sense that the sets were tough. I felt a little bit run down. Um, the weight wasn't moving as easily. Um, 
but I got through it all, and so I consider that a victory. So I'll put some of that stuff on here now. Also, I just got back from the store. I just got my new iPhone 5S. Um, I'm not, a, 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 I, don't, I don't consider myself like a techie, geeky kid. Um, I guess I am um, compared to some, but you know, obviously this phone's been out for a while. But the reason I went with the upgrade is because my iPhone 5S that I've had for about a year and a half um, is basically full. I got the 16 gigabyte thinking I'll never fill it up. Well, videos, pictures, apps, email, these things all fill up your phone. So I've had to start deleting stuff off my phone, which I never wanted to do. So I went to the store and I got the uh, I got the 5S. This is the uh, the 64 gigabyte 5S. It does have some cool new features. It's got a faster processor. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to make some movies on here. It also has the uh, the finger button ID for security, so you know how to type a, a code in. You just put your fingerprint on it and it opens the phone. Um, I also got the black model. So whatever. So that's that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna be transferring my 5S, doing a backup and restore to here. Um, and then I'm also going to be going to the gym for some squat, bench, and deadlift. Uh, this is uh, week week five for me with DUP. Um, I've made amazing progress. Uh, so I'm not going to really discuss my progress until uh, Ben and I do a taper. I'm hoping that happens. Well, I'm not hoping. Whenever that happens, it happens, but I think it's coming soon. Uh, I leave for Australia in three weeks. So. Um, We'll see where I'm at before I go to Australia. Maybe I'll do a, a rundown video of my time under Ben and how it's, I've progressed. But regardless, uh, Friday I did a set, which you're about to see, of 310, 310 pounds for six reps. Still, by many standards, very, very weak. But for me personally, when I did my one rep max in December, um, I did a comfortable 315. So you can see how I can be happy about that because that is definitely progress. Um, and I still haven't done a paper. That's just during my, that was just one of my uh, final as many as possible sets on, um, uh, on Friday. So those that don't know what a taper is, basically I am in a period right now where I'm uh, building up my volume, probably overreaching a little bit, especially on Fridays. Volume is increasing every week. So at some point we're gonna taper volume slightly allow the body to <clears throat> actualize the progress that I've made and I should go into the gym one day feeling like key man and be able to hit some really nice uh, PRs for either reps or weight. But that's coming down the road. But this week is just another old week of DUP. The volume is up um, a little bit I noticed on the program so I'm actually excited about going into the gym. Um, and it's funny now that I'm squatting Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, along with bench and, um, and deadlift on Monday, Fridays, Monday and Fridays I find that Taking two days off from squatting, be it Saturday and Sunday, today I feel like I haven't been to the gym in forever. I haven't squatted in forever. I feel completely fresh. It's the strangest thing um, when it used to be, you know, it would take three or four days to recover. So there is merit to the idea that if you increase your training frequency, your body speeds up the recovery process. Um, now maybe didn't mean to treat you bad. To uh, jump into the squat rack, I hope you enjoy my uh, little music I got going. That's an old uh, unplugged version of Candlebox, Far Behind. I like to throw in some acoustic music in my stuff. It's um, it's easier to get by on YouTube without having to uh, get blocked for royalty. But um, so the reason I'm including this set of squats, this is only 275. This was my Wednesday workout. Um, we dropped the weight a little bit this week. Um, because I wasn't performing as well on Friday of last week. But what, what he did was, even though he dropped the weight, Ben that is, he increased the volume. Um, what this allowed me to do over the last couple days is really work on my form. And what I want to point out on this set, what made me really happy is if you watch my knees, there's very little travel in my knees. I've gotten much better at mobility as far as taking my knees outward as I descend instead of forward. And I really felt solid on all these reps. I felt like I could go for days. Um, but, but, you know, these are just the little things that you get used to as you go through squatting more frequently and more frequently. So, um, on this day, my knees and everything felt great. I felt like I was hitting depth very easily. Um, and then I moved on to the bench. So on this day, uh, my bench sets were 300 for sets of uh, six. And 
that's not a difficult way for me, but it's not an easy way for me either. So um, I'll go ahead and go with you through my setup. So my goal here, once I get under the bar, I find my mark. Um, I actually put my finger right on the rings, my, uh, my pointer finger. Now I get my upper back set where I want it to be. I kind of lock my upper back on the bench. Then I put my feet on the ground and try to keep an extended position. But as you can see, this bench is kind of low, so it's hard for me. So on the first couple reps, this was my first set, what I like to do is, just to make sure I'm safe, I don't pause for too long. As I get to the final reps, you'll see I pause for a long hold. Um, and that just lets me know that my strength made it through the set. So, thanks for watching guys. That was, a, uh, that was it for me, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. New video coming up in the next couple days.